how do we move forward in some kind of healthy way, right? Education, I'm, I'm big on, on that. The more you know, the more you are put in a position where you can make an informed decision. But to be able to heal from anything, you have to first acknowledge that it exists. So we have to acknowledge this disease of racism as traumatic for the entire country. <coughs> and once we own this trauma and we say it out loud, the shame of it dissipates. Shame can't, can't exist where we've outed it or outed the actual trauma. Second thing you do is you feel that pain unapologetically. Just sit on in it for a while. Third thing you do is you get clarity of where you are right now. You ground yourself. <coughs> once you're able to do that, you can make an informed decision. Once you get the emotion piece out, right? And once you do that, you can make the necessary personal uh, and policy choices and decisions that can move forward in the direction of healing. And that can look a like a lot of different things. That could mean that you simply introduce someone to your, introduce yourself to someone who's different than you. Or perhaps when you weren't as healed, you couldn't do this like child trying to right? Another thing you can do is challenge your school or work to assess how how inclusive they are through workshops and surveys. You can attend a rally. You can vote. You can change a policy. You can run for office. You can read. You can question. You can put your research where people need it the most, which is out in the public. You know, sometimes as academics, we uh, start having these conversations among ourselves without bringing it to the very people that we're talking about. Uh, and at the end of the day, if you have a scar from something that hurt you, the scar might still be there, but the triggers may not hurt as much. And that's how you know you're on the path to healing. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes for just a minute. And I want you to ask yourself very introspectively, why are you here? What is your purpose? Right here at this place at this time, why are you here? And I want you to open your eyes to think about what it means to actually be an educated person. You know, it's this same consciousness that reminds us who we are and the power within us that we can actually move mountains when we decide that that's what we're going to do through collective consciousness. You know, this allows us to break chains of toxic patterns of behavior from church, family, government, all this jazz. Right? All these things leading us down the road of mediocrity, you know, self-destructing ourselves, or particularly our higher selves. So I'm talking about a transformational kind of growth. And when you do transformational growth, it's like a concept, a conceptual change. When you change a concept, it's very difficult. It's kind of like uh, you need an iron rod to change a concept. And if you have this iron rod and you want to move it, you have to put some kind of fire up underneath it. That fire is usually called conflict. <coughs> and so once that happens, you, you can understand that conflict is good. How you manage that conflict can make a break or situation. So as you're going through this transformational change, you'll find that many people, your family, your loved ones are going to look at you, oh, you changed, you think you all oh, that, now you got your new education. <laughs> as you grow, you are supposed to change. That's with anything. In seventh grade, most of us, I know my sons are going through it, they, their bodies hurt. They're having growing pains, right? It's supposed to hurt. When you go to the gym, I just started going yesterday, right? I'm trying to get it back, right? <laughs> when you go and you haven't been in a while, it hurts. But if you go through the pain of that change, fine and sexy live on the other side. And you're not going to get there without going through that process. 
So you have to do that. 